Hey everyone, welcome to running away. Jansen's been a fool. What are you doing here? Running to kidnap the queen? Well, we weren't, but apparently that is happening. Uh, hello, General. Oh, man. I see you're at least smart enough not to resist. Take them away. Yes. yes. You men, follow me to Her Majesty's room. Understood. Understood. Your Highness, it's General Kakanis. I heard a loud noise just now. Are you alright? Your oh, Highness, please open the door! That's no good, sir. It won't open. Bridge, open the door to Her Majesty's room. Immediately. This is an emergency. That's strange. It doesn't open. Idiots! You open the emergency hatch! Ah! Alright, I think I know where that is. So, unless this is something else that Gongoro has told him to do, which I very much doubt, given that there was no mention of unless Kakanus and Gongoro are working together. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just Jansen. Well, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, we're going to want to get this over and done with quickly. Oh, boy. Well, have you fallen for me yet? Doesn't count as falling for you if you hypnol them. Oh, okay. Very high encounter in here. Let's say very. Well, if we assume that a crit does double damage, that would be 180 damage taken. Yeesh. Also, it seems that if there is no front line, then whoever's in the back gets put in the front. Okay, just have to heal up. Oh. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. There wouldn't be a... Uh, any defense for the front line. This does not look good! Yeah, you and me both. Oh, he doesn't have the appropriate rig on. Well, have you fallen for me yet? I just want to get out of here. I mean, I. Imagine I'm going the wrong way. Oh no, maybe not. Hey there, little guy. You lost? What? You're not chasing me too, are you? Whoa! Whew! Close one. You're quite kind, aren't you? Ah, you're awake, Your Highness. Uh, what? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this isn't funny. I, I need to get out you of know. this. I was never really asleep. Huh? I couldn't judge your true intentions, oh. so I tested you. 
I sincerely apologize. <laughs> well, then do something about this, okay? Would Not you? just now. I am the queen, and I cannot just simply run away with you. But that Kakanis bastard is taking advantage of you. You can't be comfortable surrounded by these lunkheads, can you? Even so, I will not forsake my duties. Your feet will be fine. Just remain here for a little while. Nothing higher will turn to stone. <laughs> Gee, thanks for considering my, uh, <laughs> higher parts. <laughs> you finally sound more like yourself. Huh? Such insincerity reflects poorly on your true self. Whew! All that formal speech stuff is making my shoulders stiff anyway. But I'm fired up now, my queen. When I get out of this, I'll prove my sincerity to your heart's content. Oh, yeah. You can bet on it. Your Majesty! Ah, God, crap. Oh, this is so unfair. Have you been home? She doesn't need defending from anyone. <laughs> You, my friend, need to call a plumber. Or an exterminator. Oh, those janky mouth animations. Ah, uh, you know, sometimes I really don't miss the early 2000s. And their weird animation styles. Welcome to Namara, everyone. It's quite pretty. And it's got one boat, and it's huge. About the same size as the city, actually. Philosopher's chamber filled with soldiers. It says a lot about your philosophy.
Travelers! Thanks to Her Royal Majesty's leniency, you are now free to go. Now, move along! Royal Guards, dismiss! Did they really all need to be there for that? I get the idea of setting an example, but... And now they simply turn their backs. <laughs> well, I say it's great. I mean, we're free, aren't we? Ah, oh, and it's all thanks to Ming. It bothers me that you speak so casually of the Queen. Is there something you're not telling us, Jansen? <laughs> Did you do something to her? Wait, come on. <laughs> hmm. Um. <laughs> all right, back to treasure hunting. Or not. Oh, that reverb effect. That's gonna get old quick. I'm not done yet. I'll take it all three of those doors take us to the same place. Yep. No, can't say anything. Right, as waste of time. Cool. Yeah, someone that kind of whimsical makes you wonder how they got in power. But uh, you know, it's a monarchy. Can I probe? I can probe! Frontier Ciderites. Ciderites. What does that do? Flower of Suspicion. Hmm. Alright, fine. Oh, really? The Queen robbed of her power. And what power would that be? Hmm. I mean, they're all talking pretty openly about this. This shouldn't be news to Ming, it would seem. But whatever keeps the peace, I guess. That is 100% the Mario coin noise. Oh, look at that. It's like the first place we found a seed, which actually makes sense. Yeah, I remember this place being huge. Can I go this way? Nope. Hey, kid. Okay, well, there's our first side quest. Find a dog. Moo! Oh! We have another immortal on our hands. Immortal number three. Emperor Ming. <laughs> I mean, you say the embodiment of the royal family, but if she's been ruling for a thousand years, what? Like, <laughs> you're, even if you're her child, you're kind of born never to be a ruler. Because she's immortal. Moo! Moo the dog! Alright then. You 
handled your role well. So, my performance was acceptable? Oh. Yes, Your Highness. We should now be able to achieve our objective. Let them loose and follow them to the truth. And what will we gain from this exercise? When we have proof they work for the enemy, we'll lock them up again. They'll give us excellent leverage in negotiations with Ura and beyond the negotiations. We stand to gain information about Grandstaff. Grandstaff? Ura has built a gigantic magic engine called Grandstaff. And we suspect they're plotting something. Right now, Ura poses a terrible threat to the entire world. A threat? Our intel has confirmed that the tragedy at Wool Highlands is connected in some way to Grandstaff. If we continue to allow Ura to run rampant, that tragedy could be repeated again at any time. The authorities in our military have voted unanimously to seize Ura as a preventative measure. You plan to start a war? The White Boa is already being converted into a battle flagship, and we've begun assembling troops and arms. This action is for the sake of the entire world. I won't allow it. While your majesty may have other ideas, the people will surely approve these safety measures. In this present magic industrial revolution, your majesty's isolationist policy is pushing the nation to its limit. National isolation promotes peace. <gasps> this new regime must be created for the sake of world peace. We shall spread your majesty's teachings using our nation's military might. You think military force can avert violence? Would you rather see a media fall on Umara? If that were to happen, the people who so adore you would be reduced to ashes in an instant. No, the Grand Staff should not be in the hands of those simple-minded fools in Ura. We Numarans should control it. Then we can use it to maintain peace all over the world. Numara would become the most powerful, peace-loving country What's with the over-the-top breathiness? <laughs> War is inevitable, your should just keep quiet, play their role, and smile. Someone get in here! Now! <laughs> what? What just happened? The thing is, he does have a point. What I really don't get about all of this, though, is that they're being like, Oh, we suspect they're Uran spies, but we were on Uran property. Unless I'm mistaken, like, Gongora, who works for Ura built Grand Staff, which means that it's Uran, and we are from Ura going there to investigate it. So we're investigating our own property. So why would that be surprising that we're there? Like sure, telling them we're travelers, not handing over inf any information about Grand Staff. We don't have any information on Grand Staff, so I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes expending energy is the best way to recharge yourself. Freshen up your mind. Another thing to look out for. Yep. Yeah, something about the worlds in this game as well. It feels a lot more lived in. Like, a believable amount of NPCs. Hm. Having flashbacks to a fetch quest. I think we have to, like, speak to one person. 
speak to another, speak to another, and keep handing out items. Similar to the um, Link's Awakening fetch quest. I think, let me just stand behind you before you throw that coin. I see a proby pot or two. Cool. So is that, is that what this thing is? Oh, I don't know. Okay, other species? I don't remember that in this game. I'm gonna regret this. I just got a tail. That's where you speak to everyone in a JRPG, or in any RPG, to be fair. Because of skills and abilities. So he's got all the analyses. And then also it's going to... Would I rather have Crisis Defense Boost or Crisis... I'm going to have Defense Boost because it means that once you get into a critical state, you're less likely to be killed off. Still probably going to be killed by it, but it's something. So means we don't need any of the analyses. Jansen hasn't got anything good. Hmm. That's a bit better. See the mini map a bit easier. Oh yes, I remember that place. The Crimson Forest. I believe that is where the Kelolons live. And where we can spend some of our seeds. I think. Alright, alright. You chill out, dude. Yes, I do enjoy the architecture of this place. Feels somewhat Greek. There's a lot more white stone. Yeah, let's go stand in. Stay at the inn, even. Kitty. Meow. Cute. Mm hmm. Yeah, fair. Glowing flowers give seeds. Give me your seed. Oh, 
or your herb. Plenty more treasures to be had here, it seems. So, you know, this is one of the reasons I prefer... And this isn't knocking 2D JRPGs or RPGs in general, but... This is why I prefer Third Dimensions... Gives the world a much more interesting feel. Like, I'm not saying that things like Final Fantasy V or the old Dragon Quest games, obviously they were limited by what could be processed at the time, but I'm not saying they didn't do a good job of fleshing out their environments or anything, but like, when you see a game like. Octopath Traveler, which I will add that I haven't played, but I did try the demo, and honestly, I couldn't finish it. Mostly due to the fact that, it f to me, Octopath Traveler felt very much like what someone that doesn't play JRPGs very often says are the main points of a JRPG, which are or classic JRPGs. So, pixel art and turn based combat and uh, parties like Motley Crew parties, effectively, just randomers smashed together. And don't get me wrong, most JRPGs do have, or a lot of JRPGs and good ones at that, have those features, but that isn't what makes them JRPGs, at least not in my eye. Like, the characters in uh, Octopath Traveler, they don't really talk to each other. Like, they don't have, and this is coming again from coming someone that hasn't completed the game, but people that don't have a common bond. Like, when you look at Final Fantasy IX, the three or four strangers just kind of thrust into a group with each other and fate takes a turn and they just have to stick to one another and they go on this wild adventure gain a few friends on the way and you know they they gain this common bond but I don't get that feel from the likes of Octopath Traveler and again, it's like, oh, it's got turn-based combat. Like, yes, turn-based combat is, more often than not, my preferred uh, combat system. I do enjoy a good hack and slash. But I enjoy taking the time and thinking about... Sure. Taking the time and thinking about um, how to plan out a battle in a turn-based system. But that isn't the be-all and end-all of it. Like, it's not just, here's some pixel art. Here's some... Really... Oh, good soundtrack as well. And I will say that that was... One of my main... Probably my favourite thing about Octopath Traveler was the soundtrack. So every song I heard sounded awesome. But... Like, I was never really interested in the story. Like, I didn't immediately connect with any of the characters. And I wasn't... I didn't feel the want to go back and learn about them and while games like Final Fantasy 6 and the old Dragon Quest games and plenty of other JRPGs have beautiful pixel art whilst I loved the kind of picture book style like 2.5D of um, Octopath or even what do they call it HD 2D, I think was the term they tried coining for it. Just the, the vision netting and the tilt shift blur made it really hard for me to f 
focus on anything in the world. And whilst it is very much a stylized point to it, I just I never really enjoyed it that much. And it felt like they picked that art style just because they could, not because it necessarily fitted the scenario. You've also got to bear in mind that it probably is a lot easier to create in certain aspects 2D assets than it is 3D. It almost definitely takes up less processing power, but I don't know. I mean, I'm one of the few that didn't enjoy the game. I mean, it got rave reviews, pretty much anyone that played it and reviewed it loved it. But that's just me. Anyway, in the next episode, we're going to explore some more of Numara and maybe head out of town and uh, have a look at the Crimson Forest. See you there, everyone.